Hey everyone, Miranda Patron back here with you to do another video tutorial. Um, this one we are going to do, I've been asked to do the sh heart shamrock again. So that's what this little guy is here. And all I did was start off with a center dot and some four hearts. And then we're going to make a pretty design throughout the center just in time for St. Patrick's Day. So I hope you're all doing well and ready to do this with me today. I'm super excited. I have a bunch of great green colors here. And they range from a dark green to the Deco Art Americana line. Let's clear it out a little here for us. And also we're gonna need a white. So it's just a gradation from dark to light just to have a good mixture for our design. doing the original I did on a 4x4 canvas which you can do it basically on stone on whatever you want as long as you just obviously make it to the size about what you need for your canvas or whatever you're painting on so this was a 4x4 square one and then I've also adjusted it down to a 2x2 magnet which worked out amazing and then this I just have this because I was doodling around with painting some filigree and doing some work with that so I figured I'll just use it for a frame to do mine here in a 6x9 canvas. Alright so first you would want to find your center of your design or wherever you want your design centered and this is like I said is just a 6x9 canvas so I'm just gonna go corner to corner here so just got to get an approximation for where I want my center to be. And I'm just using, some people use chalk, you can use pencil for your lines. Um, personally, I just don't like having all the eraser marks if possible, or brush marks or just extra stuff on the canvas, so I'm using what I call my etcher. <laughs> so if, if you guys have seen my videos, you know what it is. but. I basically took a dotting tool and I bend them so that they're easier to paint with but this one I broke the end off of so it's sharp and I just if you have a black canvas or any kind of color canvas it allows me to just kind of sketch on the canvas and then just use water to erase it or even my varnish erases it when I varnish it at the end um, so I don't have to worry about getting rid of lines so if you find that helpful you could find something sharp to use just be careful you don't puncture your canvas um, you can even use the compass usually has a sharp tip on the end I've used that in the past the metal tip it will just scratch onto the surface and you can just wipe it off with water so that is helpful as well there's tons of different ways to do all these things so that is just how I'm gonna do it for us today so I have my center and I kind of want to just figure I mean, you, know, you guys who've seen <coughs> what I do, I kind of just wing it with a color scheme. So because we have this plan in mind, obviously I'm going to do the heart shamrock, but I still want to decide, you know, how large do I want my center? How large do I want my hearts? Just to kind of space it out to where it fits the piece that I'm working on. So what you can do, depending on how adept you feel with your drawing skills is you can just sketch, you know, make an approximation for what size you want your center to be and then sketch in the four hearts into that four four leaf clover shamrock formation. Something that also might help you is extending your guidelines all the way out. If you extend them all the way out then it kind of gives you more of a a guide as to where to place your hearts also for drawing but a little trick you can do let me just erase the heart here that I drew is take um, like an index card or something like that just so it's a little stiffer I find it easier to use like a 5x3 card and then what you can do is put that 
Now probably where you want your dot to end, or the point rather, to end on your dot. And then just take a little pen or marker or whatever, something to mark it, and gauge how high you want your heart. Just put a little mark there. And then you can just turn that into your heart. And then you're kind of creating a little stencil for yourself so that all your hearts will be the same all the way around. So I'm just going to cut this out. And then you have two equal sides on your heart. And you can just use that for your stencil all the way around. Now that, now that I have it down, I'm not super excited about how deep my heart goes, so I, I am going to do another one or just sketch them. But this is just to give you an idea. So once you fold it, you cut it, and then you can also make sure that it fits in every spot around your pattern. So, you know, kind of give yourself a gauge here. Make sure that they're not going to touch on the sides here and here. And then just make sure that it measures all the way around fit, fitting into your piece. All right, so everybody has their hearts on. And we will start moving along here and create our awesome little shamrock heart design. All right, so first we're going to outline our hearts with some titanium white. And that'll just kind of help us to delineate where we have for space to work with. And I like to start in the center. I am using a brush for this, but you can use your dotting tools. I usually start in the center of a design if I'm doing flower petals or whatever I'm working on where I want the size of the dots to kind of go from large to small. Um, because I want them to get kind of smaller towards the center here, just so they look a little more delicate. Then you can also, if you're using a brush, you just kind of let up lightly and your dots will get smaller as well. But you know, with your dotting tools too, as the paint starts to run off the tool, when you get to the destination, <laughs> um, it will they will get smaller as well. So I'm just working my way around the top here and I'm going to let it get a little bit lighter because I want them a little smaller in the inlet of the heart here and at the point of the heart. I'm going to wait to do the other side. I'm trying to keep the dots far apart from each other as much as possible so that uh, they don't bleed into one another if the design starts to get too close to each other. And this way too, like when you're doing flower petals or anything like that, you kind of have an opportunity to let those first round dots dry and work your way around your piece so that they, you don't have to sit there watching paint dry or work on another project. You can work around the same one that you're working on, just letting certain sections dry. You just have to be careful not to stick your hand or wrist or elbow <laughs> in what you're working on. That way too, we're kind of outlining one side of each one. So 
a lot of you have made the comments to me that you've noticed sometimes I'll paint two-handed or I just kind of hold my other hand or make a bridge with my other hand. Just on the days where I'm having a little trouble, maybe I've had too many cups of coffee or I'm just unsteady for other reasons. Um, but there are a ton of products now that I've seen where people use a bridge, they call it, and you rest your arm on the bridge and that will help keep you steady while you're painting. So I'm sure it's just like any tool that you just have to get used to using. But I thought just I would put that out there because it would probably be helpful to a lot of y'all who are saying that you're not steady enough to do dots, that it's a way to bridge your, hold your hand on a bridge to be steady. And then there's less likelihood that you will be as shaky or have, you're able to do smaller movements when the rest of your wrist is steady. I've had a lot of questions about this brush lately too, which I'm, I'm surprised that there's people who still don't know about the angled brushes. No, it's, I'm just teasing. It's very funny. It's great. It's easy to see what you're, what you're doing when you're pushing down. You can see where you're placing your dots. Um, same thing with the dotting tools. I have bent my dotting tools and they sell them bent now. I've been selling them even in my Etsy shop now with an angle in them just because people are finding it more helpful because you can see where you're placing your dots. It's not just an arbitrary, oh, I think it's there, <laughs> putting them down. So the brush I'm starting to see become less and less available. It's sold out of a lot of places, so I'm on the hunt for another supplier. I might even just go to the actual company to see if they would be willing, if Princeton would be willing to work with me on this to get them to you all. And the Amazon prices fluctuate. I mean, I've seen it everywhere from $11 down to $350, but it's always fluctuating. thing that I like about the brushes is you only have to dip it one time and you can get a good long distance row of dots out of it rather than constantly going back and forth to a palette um, which can be tedious but on the other hand I've had lots of people explain to me how much they enjoy the back and forth motion of going to the palette gets them into kind of a rhythm. Somebody said a zen rhythm. It's pretty awesome. I like that point of view on that because I was, I get, you know, impatient I guess maybe. This, this is all about me learning patience doing dotting, but getting into a good rhythm is definitely a must. So if you can do that back and forth to the palette, that's awesome. So back in the center here, so the biggest dots are in the center. When I mean center, I mean the center of the line.
I'm shrinking down so y'all can see. I tend to move around a lot when I paint as well. <laughs> Right now I just redipped, but I can tell on my brush that I have a little too much, so either you, you can drop some of the paint off somewhere else where you need it, so you have less when you go back to work on it, or you can just press down way less with the brush and just kind of create those smaller dots in there. Almost around our other heart here, our last one. So your design should look to be about here at this point. So let's go for a kind of lighter green. Maybe we'll do this apple green of the Americana multi-surface. And I'll put that in our center here. I kind of like the multi-surface. They leave a little bit of a sheen on the top. Might not be exactly the word I'm looking for, but it's a, a smoother surface on the top. And I'm going to put a good amount on there because I kind of want my dot to be larger than, well, my ferrule on that brush isn't working. <laughs> I want it to be a little bit larger in the center here. So I'm just going to paint it around just to hit all the tips of those parts like that. Okay, so I have this fun sea glass green. And I think we'll just do three little dots from our point. Do our dot in the point and then one and two on either side like that just to kind of give it a base for a larger dot moving up into the heart. So this would be about a one millimeter dotting tool if you're using nail dotting styluses, the, probably one of your smaller ones, just as far as the size of the dot that you want. And then the next one we're going to do probably about a two millimeter, three millimeter size. And we're going to go with a darker, more, this is festive green. Just to kind of give us some contrast here. <clears throat> Above those three dots that we just created. Alright, so this next one is another multi-surface paint. It's called Soft Jade. And I have another brush that I've been using lately that I like. It's even smaller than the angle detailer, so you can go even smaller without having to worry about pressure. Um, but it's this it's the petite spotter, and it's a size 20. I don't know if you can see that on there. So the, the angle spot detailer is a 10. And so this is considerably smaller, and you'll see here the difference too, how tiny, tiny you can get your dots.
I'm just doing a ring of the soft jade around that darker green that we just put down. This one has a rogue hair I need to clip, I guess. So some of the things too um, lately that I've been wanting to talk about is brush care. And ordinarily too, I have people ask me what I do to my brushes and I don't I don't clip them, I don't clip the bristles shorter and I don't put anything on it to stiffen them. But if you have stray hairs, I will pluck them out with a tweezers or something like that. Or if you have a rogue one like this one has one sticking out above all the rest which will kind of mess up your dots. And I just clip that one or pluck it out um, just so that'll be more helpful to you. But also with your brushes, just after you wash them, don't stand them up like this because water goes down into the ferrule and it will rust. If you have nice brushes, that's gonna ruin them really quickly, unfortunately. And I like to have them dry horizontally also just because it helps the bristles lie flat. So you lay them like this on a paper towel or something and I'll actually reshape the bristles after I put them in boiling water and then lay them flat to dry. go with a little bit darker green here with the Irish moss to do a next ring around. And it doesn't have to be exact. You know, if you did 11 dots around the first one, it doesn't have to be 11 dots around every single one. That's one of the wonderful things about art is you just take your time and enjoy the process and get to be creative and have something beautiful come out of it. But definitely don't stress the amounts and the numbers of how many you're doing. One, two, three, you know, sometimes you get counting in your head, but let it go and let it flow. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to go a little bit darker, I think. Go back to maybe that festive green from the center. You can see how it starts to make that gradient of color from light to dark.
how's yours coming along? Kind of like that. All right, so let's think about what we want to do next. Maybe we'll take the same dot that we used for the center, the same color, and put a larger one at the top here. I'm trying to remember which one that was. <laughs> I think it was the green apple, the apple green. Grab some of that and do a little bit larger dot. So maybe it would be your three millimeter if you have the dotting styluses, or the two, depending on if you want to match what we did for the darker green. So now let's do a couple of upside down swipes kind of up from the bottom to that green dot that we just made here. And you can use the brushes. I'm going to go with this peacock teal. Maybe I'll show you actually how to do it with a dotting tool here. Maybe that'll be helpful. I'll just take the smallest dotting tool possible because this is a smaller space that we're working with. So you want less paint. And I just dip the tool, start where I want to drag it from, and then slowly work it up to where I want it to go. And this is the smallest size that I have. So this one is my etcher. So just take your time and drag it up to where you want to go. And I think this teal actually helps create a little bit of a good contrast to the greens that we've been doing. Sometimes, I don't know why, I feel like using one color gets too boring. <laughs> Alright, so your smallest tool. And you can use the liner brushes too like I was just using. You just push down hard at the beginning and then pull it up at the end. But to be honest, it's easier with the dotting tools. You just have little swipes like that around our pretty green design. All right, so let's go back to that soft jade again. Oops, what am I doing? Maybe I'll just switch it here and use some dotting tools, but I'm going back to the soft jade with a fairly small dotting tool, maybe your one millimeters, and then just do some outline dots around the swipe that we just created. We'll start at our larger dot up here and then just get smaller as you go down around the swipes.
let's take that pretty peacock teal again here. And we'll start a dot at the top of our apple green one here, and I'm just going to actually leave some space and do an arch straight down the sides, but leaving a space in between so that your arch kind of gives some negative space, like that. So kind of the width of the green dot, leave it up that high the apple green. They're all green, Miranda. <laughs> so I'm back with the peacock teal again. A dot over here and then let it run out as you go, leaving a space between I like a lot lately I've been working with negative spaces and just keeping it in a lot of my pieces just because I feel like it adds something different to all the dots. <laughs> and you can still do dots and then it, you know the space helps you create a different design pattern. Okay, so now that you have those on there, why don't we do two rows of that peacock? So we did one, and now we can just follow along our other line. With another row here. grab some of that soft jade again and down on either side of these guys here and put a larger dot in there
All right, let's go with some white. And we're going to let's see. Let's start at the peak where our heart peaks in. And we're going to do swipes down to these, just to the other side, maybe, of these dots here. We'll just see how that looks. So I'm just kind of thinking in my head this amount of paint that I need to get from point A to point B here. So you're going to need a little bit of a larger top, or a stylus rather. And if it doesn't quite reach, and you can go even larger, or I kind of do the double dip. So you can dip it in your paint again, and just kind of reshape it, or when you get to the top here, put down a dot of paint, and then put another dot down. And that'll give you a little bit more paint to work with to drag out as you go. I'm double dipping the dot. And then just take your time dragging it out. If you run out before you get to the end, just grab some from the end and pull it down a little more. Like that. Okay, so now we'll do the other side of the heart. And you can see the nice pattern that it's making because we're doing it all the way around on both sides. So if you step back from your piece for a minute, you'll be able to see that kind of creates that box within your hearts. Kind of like when you're a child, the kaleidoscopes, you know, you can twist them to make the shapes and the pieces would fall around and make different colored shapes, but because you're, you have the same on either side with the mirrors and everything, it's helps create the symmetrical pattern. So you can see out of our white, there's kind of like that diamond box. Alright, so I have another color I'm going to throw in here. It's a lighter green called Inchworm, the multi-surface line. And I think I'm going to do a larger dot here and then two smaller ones on either side. So like I said, straying from the original pattern, just kind of changing it up a little bit. A larger one in the center and then as your paint's coming off just two little ones off to the side here. So larger at the top in line with your point and your other dots. 
and the connection of the center of the heart here. And if you want a larger dot than your dotting tool makes, you know, when you just press it down to a canvas or whatever, just take the paint and push it around into a circle. Yeah, so I'm going a little larger than this little one millimeter allows. So I'm basically just drawing a little circle here. And then I'm stealing from that dot to make the side dots. All right. So on the previous design, I actually filled up into the sides of the hearts here, but I didn't use white in the center of the design, and I'm kind of liking the way that the design has gone, where this negative space is still there, and you have your box, and then you have the hearts kind of around it. Just, I'm enjoying that, so I'm gonna keep it there, I think, for, end it here, um, on the center part anyway. But on the outside here, we can put some more dots and more design. So I'm going to go with a few darker ones, I think. Maybe I'll even go back to that. Let's go back to the peacock teal that we have down and do a fairly large dot here at the points where our hearts are just about touching. And then depending on how, how much you want design-wise around yours, you could even carry this out farther with a bunch more rings as far as a mandala. Or you can even carry the dots down in. I kind of like my negative space there, so I'm going to leave mine blank in there. But you know, making dots around the outer edge here and you can carry it out farther or even do more here around your hearts and work the design farther out. So this could just be your center portion of a design. There's always a lot of versatility with these. But anyway, you get the idea of the basics on this little heart shamrock. And you can really, really make some fun designs from it on stone, canvas, or whatever you choose. So there's my little guy for today. I hope you all enjoyed doing this with me. I really enjoy painting with you all. Um, as always, you can find me on Instagram, Facebook. I'm everywhere. <laughs> if you want to get these videos first. I always release them to my Patreon subscribers first. I'll put the link for that in the description. I also usually put the colors for what was created here today in the description as well with some helpful links, um, tools and varnishes, whatever we used in the video type thing. So, um, Also, if you check out my Facebook right now, there is a giveaway going on for, not the jelly roll, sorry I grabbed the wrong one. <laughs> The pen here, which is the H-A-O-C-A-I, I cannot pronounce it, but this is the first pen that I've found that I've been able to varnish over with, and not had a problem. Have, it hasn't smeared or anything, so there's a giveaway on Facebook going on with that. Um, Alright, so we're done for today. I hope you all are doing well, and I look forward to hearing your comments about everything, and just even stop in and say hi, and uh, see how you're doing. Alright, have a great day and happy painting.